Okay, welcome to another video. So KDE Plasma version 5.22 has just been officially released on the 8th of June. Some of the main features include improved Wayland support and adaptive transparency, which is something that I've wanted on KDE for a very long time. So what we're going to do in today's video is run through some of the new features and see how we go. Now the distribution we're going to be using to test out some of the new features is going to be KDE Neon, which is one of the best places to test out the latest and greatest that Plasma has to offer. So I think we'll start by going over some of the visual changes, with the first one being the most obvious, which is of course the new wallpaper for this release, which is quite a nice and colourful pixelated kind of design. And it's called Altai. Next up, and probably what I'm most excited about of this new release of KDE is the adaptive transparency for things like your panel. So at the moment we've got a completely clear desktop with no applications open. So if we right click onto our panel itself and go to edit panel, click more options, you can see now under opacity we have adaptive, opaque and translucent, with adaptive being the default. So what that means is when we've got application maximized, it's going to go from translucent to opaque, so kind of like a more solid color. So let's give that a go now. So let's close all of this off and open up our file manager. And now we're going to go ahead and double click the title bar to full screen it. Now, as you can see, it might be a bit hard to see on the screen grab there, but it's now transitioned away from the slight translucency to a nice solid and opaque color. Now, one of the main benefits of having adaptive opacity for your panel is that it's going to help you feel a little less distracted when you've got an application maximized so you can focus on the task at hand. And of course, if adaptive opacity isn't quite your thing, you can then just choose to leave it on either opaque or translucent. Now if we move over to our task manager we of course have had Windows Preview for quite a while now on KDE which is when you hover your mouse over the applications icon and then you'll get a small preview of the applications window. We're new on this version of KDE is now that if we hover over it once more and then hover over the actual preview of it it's then going to show it in your main desktop view like so. So if we do it with the file manager and hover over it you can see that it's now disappeared from discover and that is now kind of focused on your desktop so you can really get a nice full screen view of what's going on with your application windows. There's also been some improvements made to KDE's widgets. So for example, if we go ahead and open up the sticky widget and drag that straight onto our desktop, we can now customize the size of the text that is displayed in these sticky note widgets. So now that we've typed in some text on our sticky note, we can then go into the settings. And then as you can see, we now have the option of changing the text font size with 10 being the default. Let's bring it up to 14. And that should make it a lot easier to read text that you've got on your desktop. Now if we move our focus onto the bottom right hand side of the screen, we can see the improvements made to the system tray. Not only has the appearance been improved to give it more of a consistent look, but then clicking on the actual clock itself will then reveal a much more consistent and functional calendar. Now by default our current date is displayed just beneath the digital clock itself, but if we right click and go to configure digital clock, we can see now under information of show date is set to an adaptive location, but we now have the option to do always beside time, which is going to show it in one line as opposed to having them stacked on top of each other. And now as a small little time saving new feature for your audio devices, we can select our audio devices profile straight from within the widget. So all we need to do is click our audio widget and then as you can see on the right of each device we have these little hamburger menus. There's also been some improvements made to some of KDE's applications. So for a while the default system monitor was of course K-SysGuard, but they've transitioned away from that and are now using Plasma's system monitor. And with Plasma's system monitor, you get a much more functional and modern looking system monitor. So on the first page, we of course have our overview for things like memory, disk and CPU usage, as well as network and systems. And we now have the all new application view where we can monitor the applications. Then we have history and processes and we can add new pages. Now moving on to one of my favorite features of KDE in general, which is their application launcher, KRunner which has also seen some improvements in this new release of KDE. Now the first improvement, something that does sound quite minor, but it will make the world of difference when you're using KRunner. So up until now, when you search for an application, let's say Firefox, it would often give you weird, confusing duplicate results, let's say for a shortcut or a panel entry, but now it's gonna know exactly what you're searching for and show just the one application. Now the other improvement to KRunner and something that's a bit more useful is that it can now show more than one line of text. So for example, if we wanted to define a word with a dictionary definition, we could type define, followed by a word like legend, and then there you go, we get a nice long dictionary definition of any word that we type in there with the parameter of define. Now the system settings has long been the one-stop destination for Plasma users to configure pretty much every part of their system, and that's received some attention in this update too. Now when you open up the system settings, you're going to be taken directly to what they call the speed dial page. 
here is where you're going to find some of the most commonly used settings as well as what the user uses themselves the most so as you can see we can very quickly switch from light and dark themes change the animation speed as well as the wallpaper show more appearance settings and then we can select how we're going to do single and double clicking and then just beneath that we can see the most used settings now i'd actually go so far as to call this a standout feature as well so a lot of the time when you go into the system settings you don't always want to troll through all of the different options that kde gives you and you just very quickly want to switch from your light or dark theme or change your wallpaper etc so this will make using the system settings a whole lot faster and now there's also been some changes to the way you can manage your offline updates so offline updates are what happens when it asks you to reboot to apply an update as your system is starting back up so the benefit of updating this way is that it avoids interfering with any running packages however not everyone's a fan of that so you can go straight into the software update in your system settings and here we can choose update software manually automatically and then as you can see right here we have use offline updates and it's now time for us to switch sessions and see some of the new features and improvements that have made their way over to wayland now you might notice that our desktop layout has changed ever so slightly and our panel is now at the top now the reason being for this is that one of the new features that have made its way over to wayland pertains to the global menu which is something I'm very happy about because I'm a massive user of global menus on pretty much any system that I use. So we've got our global menu activated and we've gone ahead and opened up our file manager of Dolphin. And as you can see, we now have this button here called search where we can search through menu items, which is going to make things very useful, especially when you've got quite an involved application. So using a file manager, for example, if we wanted to go for a new tab, we just search for new or if you wanted to try out copy, we can go to that as well. Again, little things like that just making the desktop a whole lot easier to use. And it just goes to show you how much they really are focusing on Wayland because when you switch over to X11, you'll notice that that search button is no longer present. And now to further prove the progress they're making towards Plasma on Wayland, you can now use activities on Wayland the same as you would on X11. Now, for those of you that have never used activities before, it's a very powerful feature that's exclusive to KDE. Basically, what it allows you to do is create multiple different environments that are independent of each other that can be set up for different tasks. So, for example, you could have one that you call work where you have all of your work stuff set up there. And then you could also have one called personal and then you can switch between the two depending on what you're doing. So as you can see, we've now created an additional activity to give us two and the new one is called work. So for each activity, you can go into the settings of them, set their own icon and description and then also give them a custom shortcut to go directly to that activity or you can switch between them by simply pressing super and tab. Now, if you go into the power management setting, you'll see that we also have the option here for activity power settings, where you can set individual power settings for each of your activities. So it's a very useful feature that is now on Wayland. So another feature that's been present in X11 for a little while now, but has now made its way over to Wayland, is the ability to present all windows by moving your mouse cursor to the top left hand side of your screen. And that's going to present all of your windows in a nice little full screen view like so now there's just a couple more things that i haven't managed to capture in this video which are to do with the notifications and kwin and graphics so in plasma's 5.22 wayland session the notification widget becomes smart and gets out of your way when you don't want it to interrupt you if you are sharing or recording your screen for an online presentation class or video the notification widget will automatically enter do not disturb mode and suspend intrusive pop-up notifications until you are done it can also inform you when a download from the internet has been blocked because you need to tell the browser to start or continue with the download. What's more, when the download is done, the notification widget can figure out and show you which app will open the file. And moving on to KWIN and graphics, KWIN supports variable refresh rate slash free sync screens on Wayland. This means that if you have more than one screen and each of them has a different refresh rate, you can configure each one of them individually so video playback and games will look perfect regardless of which one they are displayed on. Another thing that contributes to a good video experience in Wayland is that KWIN can now set a screen's overscan value. This ensures that none of the images will be cut off outside of the borders of the screen and can also be used to remove black borders around the edges. This is useful if you want to play a movie on a TV, for example. Right, so I think that is where I'm going to wrap it up with my first look at some of the most notable new features of KDE Plasma's version 5.22. For those of you who want to read a little bit more, I'll leave a link down below to the release announcement. But all in all, I've really enjoyed it. I think it's been a very good update with some of my own personal favourite new features being the improvements made to KRunner and actually the adaptive transparency, which is something I've wanted on KDE for a very long time. I'm also happy to see the improvements that have been made onto Wayland. If you want to give it a go yourself, you're probably best off going ahead and downloading KDE Neon. 
but thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please let me know and let me know what your favorite new features of this release are as well i'll see you on the next one bye bye